Good afternoon, everybody. We are at the Come and See event on Saturday, the 21st of September, 2024. With me, I have my wonderful guest, Lisa Oldfield. Have I pronounced your surname properly? Yes, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Hello. So thank you so much for coming in today, because I know it's a, a little bit of a struggle at the last minute, yeah. but you made it fantastic. Yeah. So it's brilliant. So basically, I've invited Lisa to, to come in today, because I met her a couple of weeks ago, even though we've met before. Uh, when I was working at a local market and um, she invited me to a launch. This was a couple of weeks ago, wasn't yeah. it? Literally at Brixton Library. Ago. And I went and I was really, really impressed, so impressed that I wanted her to come in and share with us all about her business and also invite her on to Riverside Radio. Yes, Fantastic. So that's next yes, well. definitely. So you must be so excited to have just launched your business. I am. I yeah. am. Uh, as I say, it's been, we spoke earlier before yes. this, but it's been like months and months in the writing, uh, years in the planning. Um, it took a big leap for me to move away from my career and my income to um, take the chance, basically. So yeah. I knew, I know it's going to work. I know the program works. Yes. Um, so yeah, just to get it out there into Lambeth and help with the women that we can help. Excellent. In Lambeth. Yeah, because I, I, I was I, so impressed when I went to the launch. I wasn't expecting it. It was a room full of people, right. all sort of focused on uh, what you were saying. Cause it, you know, it's, it's a really, really good pro, uh, program. I'm really impressed with it. Thank you. So a little bit about your background, because I know that you're, you're very well educated, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I hold degrees in criminology and social legal studies yes. um, from the University of Westminster. Oh, okay. Um, and after that, it led me on to working in prison law and mental health law right. for a while as a paralegal. Yeah. Um, before moving on into working for charities, so yeah. writing and developing programs. So um, yeah, very much stuck to my criminology roots. Criminology roots um, with all the work that I've done. Um, it's all been people based and centered on. Um, how we can support people and how we can help people and how we can move people on from the situation they're yeah. in. So, yeah, um, definitely. Um, so what made you make the decision to start Let's Grow? Because that's the name of your yeah, business, isn't it? It is. Let's Unfortunately, um, you know, academia aside um, and work experience aside, it was my own personal experiences of domestic violence and um, moreover the recovery after um, and the services or lack thereof that I found at that time. I mean, this is a few years ago, but unfortunately I don't think much has changed in the way of rates of domestic violence or women knowing where to go to. Uh, more often than not, you have to contact four or five different agencies to get that level of support that you require. Right. Um, so yeah, it was my, my goal and my dream is to have a hub where, you know, everything can be provided that that woman needs at that moment when they're leaving an abusive partner. Because I like the fact that she goes into detail of the type of help a woman would need if she needed to leave or she needed to move into a flat. Yeah. You get uh, people to help. Yeah, well, one the, thing, yeah, we started off, I started off writing a 10-week program, um, which was, you know, highlighting all the areas of domestic violence. We talk about coercive control and we talk about anger and healthy ways to release it and a very well-being centered course. Um, and then from the back of that, um, I started to write some well-being programs. But what practical um, things can we offer people? What you know? What do people? What did I need in that first instance? So then I, I literally rewrote it, um, forgetting all my academia and what what helped me. Yes. Um, very selfishly, yeah. perhaps. It is. Um, I don't think it however, is. However, you know, I'm here today, so I can, I'm a testament that it worked. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's you know having people around you, having that support. Yeah. Um, as I just spoke earlier, again, lots of women suffer isolation. Anyway, it's very lonely living in London, yeah. you know, sometimes um, when you're leaving domestically abusive relationships, more often than not, the abuser may have moved you from your network. And when you leave them, you then have to leave your the schools, the kids' schools, your workplace, your home. Your, yeah. um, more often than not, you're in a refuge on your own with a bag and a kid or two um, starting over again. So being there from that first moment of contact when, when they reach out to us to offer practical support and to offer, you know, a group of strong women to come in, um, you know, help them on moving day, for instance, yeah. putting a bed together, change, you know, putting covers on, making mm. tea, All um, little things, making, you know, lot, making yeah. that space a home and a yes. safe, safe space for them, yeah. not somewhere they've just fled to, yes. um, you know, somewhere that they belong and somewhere, um, you know, so starting them off on a strong footing yeah. and then helping them through with any emotional needs, yeah. any physical needs, um, financial needs. Mm. Uh, we've recently partnered up with the Lambus Larder, so yes. shout out to Lambus yes, Larder, yes. thank you very much. So 
where we're able now to refer women that come to us to the land of Florida for food support yeah for financial services if they require that as well um, we're trained and able to offer advice on benefits yeah. on um, any legal problems that they mm -hmm. may be having so far as contact mm -hmm. issues um, with the partner or with the children um, with the housing issues uh, benefit entitlements and everything else and making sure that all the areas that they they you know, are struggling with at that moment, uh, we can come in and support them as much as we can. Yeah. Um, we know statistically the first few months of um, a woman leaving their partner, statistically there's a high chance they're going to go back. Uh, a lot of the time it is financial reasons, it's the children, it's they have nothing, they don't know what they're doing. Mm. You know, the, the guy maybe have controlled everything in the past for them. Um, you know, even like bill paying and stuff can be quite difficult for someone that's never had to do that, who's, you know, have their finances controlled. Um, and not even you know aware of their national insurance number, for instance. I've right. come across women that had no idea really? what the national right. insurance number was, mm. let alone that it had been used for the last 20 years for yeah. fraudulent behaviours. Or you know, so uh, lots of women come with a, a, a range of, of problems that we hope to be able to offer. So it's our goal that from the woman comes to us until they no longer need us, that we'll be there and yeah. we'll be there from that moment of they left all the way through as long as they can. So how do they get onto the pro to the programme? Uh, we're currently we're taking self-referrals at the moment, which I think, again, that's something that's really important to me. I know when I come out of my situation a few years ago, it was, had to go to your doctor, you had to go to this, you had to go to that, you couldn't... Um, I didn't know where to go for help. I didn't know. There was no directory, there was no service, there was no advert, there was no... Um, I think domestic violence is a hidden crime anyway and I think the shame you feel often when you come out of it stops you you know reaching out for help you may not want to contact your GP you may not want to contact um, those in official capacity because you may have concerns about your children you may still be threatening you about your children or your right. you know your perceived mental state or whatever it is when you're going through these things so to be able to self-refer and to yes. find us and we're doing a lot of advertising at the moment we've yeah. got a website we've got instagram and stuff so yeah you know any woman or any person that's concerned about their friend or family mm. can contact us in the first yeah, instance and what let me have a look and we're also um down we're being referred by lamp council so we're down as their practitioners as well for that Which so is women brilliant, yeah. you, know, you know come into contact with the council um obviously they'll, they'll be told about our service as well so hopefully yeah, yeah there's going to be enough out there for people to find us and yes, be able to this is their belief that yeah that, and it's got a lot of information on the leaf that you can see here i like this the legs <laughs> grow yeah um and um if you do want to contact lisa it's on Instagram, it's Lisa underscore Let's Grow, and the website is www.letsgrow.me.uk. Um, that's it, really, isn't it? Are you yep. on Facebook or anything? Uh, we are on Twitter. Facebook, yeah, we're also on yeah. Facebook um, as well. So, and we're currently um, running coaching sessions and a triage service on Fridays from a hub space in Kennington which is a safe space, it's a secure building. Um, we have um, you know, a team of, sort of reception on site there. So mm. all women that come to us in the first instance will feel safe yeah. from that first point of contact. It's a Lambeth service at the moment for Lambeth women, yeah. come by Lambeth women. Um, for Lambeth women provided in Lambeth. So if you're um, outside of Lambeth, you can't get onto the programme? No, at the moment, um, if we're doing online sessions, we would accept people on the borders of Lambeth, um, purely because we're setting up as a CIC, so all the services we offer are free to any woman that comes to us, and the children that come to us. Um, so it's a matter of, of funding, permitting at the moment where yeah. we can work on So do you feel it will expand? Uh, we hope we, yeah. we, our, our view is to go pan London yes. um, with it eventually. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's me and one of my colleagues, Angie, at the moment. So it's a very small team. Yeah. There's only so many hours in our week, exactly, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, ultimately, we're going to go pan London. And I know that you were saying that um, at the moment, it's for women yes. and young girls. Yeah. But eventually, it will be for uh, young, men, young, young men, men as well. Um, yeah. Purely because um, statistics have shown one in 12 women will be subject to domestic violence every single year. Uh, the discrepancy between sort of the border statistics and what we believe the numbers to be is incredible. I mean, it's like we estimate almost 2.2 million uh, victims of domestic violence in the year ending March, I think, 2024. Um, and I think statistically on you know national sort of crime statistics, it's, it's under half 
from that are actually reported. So, you know, there's at least what 1.3, 1.4 million children and women out there who aren't being supported. They haven't yeah. had peace intervention. They're not being supported. They're not. Um, so, you know, we hope to sort of be a sort of fill-in service as well to catch some of those people that may not be confident enough to go down through the official channels um, and may need support and encouragement yeah. with that as well. Yeah. So. Okay, well, I really am grateful uh, for you coming in today oh, and sharing. You. It's, you know, I'm so proud of you for uh, you. I'll pick up in a minute, but I'm so proud that you decided to, you know, yeah. take the plunge and really <laughs> just go for it. So, yeah, I, just, I just want to say one more thing, but I'm really excited and really grateful that you've allowed me to be on here. The reception that we've received from Lambeth, from, um, you know, governors, from councillors, from, you know, it, it has been received very, very, very well. Uh, yesterday we had a fantastic meeting with an agency called Forward, yeah. uh, Forward UK, I don't know if you've heard of those, they um, support survivors of FGM. Um, and female genital mutilation and domestic violence as well in, in certain communities. Um, so we're going to be collaborating with them in December to do a project around that as well. So we, okay. yeah, we're, we're, we're getting involved with other um, yeah. agencies as well. Very, that's alongside good. all our schools programs yes. that we'll be rolling out. So hopefully, yeah, 2025 is um, going to be a very busy year for yeah. Westbro. Unfortunately, um, it's it's needed. It's a service that's needed, yes. and I don't think that need's going to go away anytime soon. Yeah. So neither are we. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So again, if you want to contact Lisa, you can do so on Instagram, Lisa underscore Let's Grow, and the website is www.letsgrow.me.uk. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you so Take much. Care. Thank All you. Right. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>